Exacto. Okay, welcome everybody to our talk about our experience on building desktop and web applications with uh, EMF and other Eclipse uh, frameworks. I'm Vincenzo Caselli, here's Francesco Guidieri. We are the founder of SAP Vision, an Italian company uh, focused on Eclipse technologies. And here there is uh, Lorenzo Bettini, which is uh, our one of our most <coughs> important collaborators. He's a professor at the University of Florence, and he's the main contributor of our uh, Eclipse project, which is EMF Parsley. <coughs> so at RCP Vision, we are specialized in Eclipse technologies and mainly in the modeling area. We do evangelization of EMF based technologies, we do consulting, training, coaching on uh, this uh, kind of stuff. And we do a lot of architectural work with our customer to make all these uh, frameworks work better together. And in recently we uh, faced a, quite a challenge because we had a big application which was a desktop application based on um, CDO uh, for the persistence and we had to migrate it uh, to the web and also we had to uh, move to a um, uh, different persistence to a legacy database. The application is composed by several views that it manages PDF and images and it <coughs> basically it uh, uh, made its, its task core is to extract data from uh, physical documents and the extraction engine is based on EMF, and also EMF is, uh, we use EMF all for the, all the UI. And well, we were able to <coughs> make this migration, this complete migration, in less than a couple of weeks. So we were quite surprised of that, and we asked uh, why that could that be so easy? And uh, well, probably the main reason is that we use the uh, good uh, technologies and good patterns that we have learned in these years. And uh, well, the uh, most important uh, framework that we used is certainly EMF, which is a powerful runtime and a great uh, edit system. And for the UI, we used EMF Parsley. Uh, Again, for the persistent, we used the EMF resources API, and uh, we used also inversion of control uh, frameworks like Google Goose and OSGI declarative services. Well, <coughs> uh, the goal of this presentation is mainly to show you an EMF-based uh, architecture that is independent from the persistence layer and then also independent from the UI technology uh, as regarding the desktop target and the web target. And uh, for the website, we used the uh, RAP framework. So RAP allows you to uh, run your RCP UI code directly on the web just by switching the target platform. And well, for the persistence part, um, EMF uh, uh, offers several solutions. You can go from the standard uh, EMF persistence on uh, file system on XMI, but you can use also uh, EMF stores, CDO. Uh, you can go on the database with, uh, again with CDO, but also with Tineo. But again, we had to face, face another challenge. We had to use a legacy database. So in this case, we used uh, MyBatis, as we saw, as we see, will see. Um, so in this talk, we have some theoretical slides that will show some pattern that we used, uh, some practical slides for showing you the, some uh, snippet of code and uh, to highlight the important th things. And also we have <coughs> a practical example, a demo that, uh, we will, that you can also try by yourself uh, uh, where you can see how easily you can switch from this 
implementations. So let's have a look at the overall architecture. We have a model which is o o available to all the levels, to all the layers. And then we have on the top the UI layer that can <coughs> run on the desktop with our CP platform or on the web with the RAP platform. Same source code. <coughs> then we have the presenter that handles the control, the UI control uh, logic. Then the, we have the service layer for the business logic. <coughs> then we have defined a uh, repository API level layer and three different repository implementations that we can uh, inject uh, via OSGI. Let's have a look, for example, what happens when uh, the view uh, query for some object. Uh, so in this case, the view uh, asks for some object and delegates the request to the presenter. The presenter calls the underlying service and uh, then the service, which has the uh, business logic, can uh, be aware of which um, repository is involved, so calls the repository uh, the, the data are gathered and uh, get back the data to the presenter, which in turn prepare data for the view, and so the view can perform the data binding between the UI controls and the model elements. <coughs> so we used a kind of model view presenter pattern, because in the original uh, pattern, the view and the model are doesn't see each other. There is a presenter uh, in the middle. Uh, instead, we wanted to have the view model tied together with data binding. So the presenter is still there, it still handles the control logic, but the uh, view of the model are bind by data binding. Um, well, EMF. EMF is a great framework, power powerful framework, but you have to know how to use it because you have to deal with the resource APIs, with the editing domain, with the adapter factories for the many customizations. And so, well, EMF is the power, but the power is nothing uh, without control. So, we need, if, if we get the control over EMF, then you get a lot of things for free. For example, you have data binding between the UI and the model, you have a powerful notification system, you have many other things like validation, drag and drop support, and do redo system. So, how can we be in control of EMF? Well, for this, we used uh, EMF Parsley, our project. Um, EMF Parsley uh, allows you to use EMF, uh, but hiding all the details. It comes with uh, uh, several uh, components like trees, table, forms, and combination of them. They have simple API, APIs and a DSL, powerful DSL for the customization, and uh, it comes with Google GUIs for injection. So let's see an example of how you can use a um, component of EMF Parsley. In this case, a, a table form. Um, uh, table form component, which is um, basically a master detail component where there is a table, you have elements in the table, you click on an element and the selected element uh, details are shown uh, on the in a form and you can edit to. So how to use this? Well, you just uh, let Parsley inject the factory for this component. Uh, you call, the, with this factory, you create the component and then you set the input for this component. Just that simple. But you can use the injection also, in this case, for having the presenter injected and then you have to initialize this presenter and then uh, you can use the presenter to get the data and uh, to utilize this input for uh, setting the input of the form, uh, table form that we have just seen. 
and also <coughs> uh, the presenter can be used to delegate actions so you see here we are in a view uh, we have a button save button the button just delegates the behavior to the underlying presenter there's no logic here here we have a lambda uh, a lambda with the java 8 syntax in, in particular uh, another important thing about uh, the inversion of control with Google GUIs is that uh, you can use generics. So, for example, in this case, we have an abstract viewer presenter, so an abstract class that will handle uh, a type T that extends the E object and a service S that extends um, th th this other service that uses T object T. Then, uh, when we when you specialize this class, then so create the, the concrete class. Then the right uh, service will be injected in this class. So in this uh, demo, we will show a little example, uh, which is a very simple example of rent a car um, application. And so this is the model, the MF model for this application. Uh, basically, you have uh, users, you create users, you create uh, vehicles, and then you can say, uh, you can r make a reservation for a given vehicle to a given user. Very simple. Um, but we said that we want to have also the CDO implementation, persistence. And if you are familiar, how many of you are familiar with CDO? Okay, quite a few. Um, so, uh, if you are familiar with that, uh, you will know that um, the generated uh, source code from uh, the uh, CDO model is different than the generated source code from uh, standard EMF. So, how to deal with this? Well, we did uh, in this way. We created a plugin with the model here, here is the e core, and then we created two different gen models, one for CDO, one for um, standard EMF, and instructed the two gen models to generate two different, uh, the code in two different plugins. So basically, we have one API, one model API plugin, and two uh, model implementations in different plugins and uh, you can notice that maybe it's not readable but we will l release the slides uh, the um, package have the same name the two plugins so if you use this approach and if you use import packages in the dependency instead of um, required bundles then you can make a um, plugin, a consumer of this object uh, model, uh, to, uh, completely independent from the specific uh, implementation. It just depends from to the uh, to the UR, uh, to the API. So this is uh, just the list of the plugin that you will find um, in the example, and uh, well, there are a couple of plugins for the. Um, uh, CDO server. Uh, there are two plugins for the RAP application and the LCP application, but please note that these are just empty um, applications, just for the launches uh, and the startup. Um, then we have three, the three uh, plugins for the model, so the, the e core, the API, and the two implementation that we just seen. Um, and then for uh, plugins for the repository. One is for the API and three for the different implementation. We will see them soon. And uh, then we have one plugin for the service, one plugin for the UI, and one, well, one plugin for generating the RAP target platform if you want to use the RAP. Um, okay, so let's see how the the plugin of the UI can be uh, completely, can handle this uh, uh, switching of uh, implementations. So, uh, regarding the UI, we used the 
um, optional dependencies. So we have optional dependencies both on a plugin that are needed for the RCP platform and uh, the optional dependencies for plugins that are needed for the RAP platform. So you can use uh, just when uh, the, the, the it depends just from the target platform that you have under, but the plugin uh, is unchanged. Then for the model, we can use the import package. So they, uh, as we have just seen, the packages of for the for the model are the same. We can use them then then and also uh, again we can use the um, uh, in this case the import package optional for the uh, maybe plugin for CDO if you have so th uh, this manifest is uh, unchanged can be unchanged while we switch while you switch between the many implementations um, we use the repository pattern. Well, the repository pattern allows you to deal with uh, uh, a domain model as you would do with a collection of objects. So you can add, uh, remove object, uh, change object, contain it, and so on. And uh, surprisingly enough, uh, EMF resources uh, uh, work exactly in this way. They have a method get contents, uh, which is a collection of the object. They work exactly as the repository. So this is um, our implementation of the repository, or, or better, the, the API for the repository. So we define this interface I repository, which works with a uh, type T that extend E object. So you can find the classical uh, action that you can do on a repository. So insert, update, uh, delete. Uh, uh, query all for get, getting all the objects or query by key so to get one given object uh, but you can expand this interface uh, we have we have implemented three different uh, repository implementations uh, one with uh, you know, one is dummy so you can in, in this case uh, it uh, provides it works on the mock object in memory. Uh, the other is uh, based on CDO and uh, the other is the, uh, the implementation that allows you to work with the legacy DB, working with MyBatis, which is a data mapper, which is a mapper between the database and Java uh, object, Java world, and w which is quite uh, powerful. Uh, you can find the examples uh, of this code in, at this repository and uh, in this repository you will find all the plugins that we saw before and in particular uh, inside in the two uh, application projects, the RCP and the RAP project, you will find a um, folder which is called launches where you can find three launches each. So you can have three uh, launches for the three different implementation of the persistence, the dummy, the CDO, and my bodies for each kind of platform. So in total, you have six combination of uh, uh, implementations. Uh, uh, and all are working, <laughs> yeah. Um, for running this example, we recommend to install the uh, latest oxygen uh, modeling uh, package. Uh, because it contains all you need, the uh, EMF, uh, CDO, Parsley, and so on. Um, if you, when you use RAP, you will need to install the RAP tools uh, that you can find in the Oxygen Update site uh, under the web category. And for the MyBatis generator, here is the reference to the update site, but you can also find it on the Eclipse Marketplace. Um, when you want to install the uh, RAP, well, for the RCP platform, there is no, nothing to do. You just use the running platform. For the RAP target platform, you have to create this target. And if you, you can do it easily uh, with the, the 
uh, package modeling with file, new file, EMF Parsley, EMF Parsley wrap uh, uh, target platform example. And then you can materialize the wrap platform. So it's demo time. Let's see in action. So here we, you can see that we have the wrap platform uh, active here. And so we start with the wrap version. Uh, here uh, are the projects that we saw before. And inside launches, we can you, can you can find the several launches, three launches. OK, so let's start with the dummy launch. Um, please consider that each launch, let's see the detail of, the, of a launch, each launch packages all the needed um, plugins. So depending on how you created the launch, you created a set of plugin uh, that uh, fits your need, needs. Okay, so let's la launch this, the dem dummy version with the mockup. Run as. Okay, the web application, because the, in this case we have a web application, is started. So I can open the browser. Okay, here's the web application. So here we have two views, one for the users and one for the vehicle. And uh, for example, I can change something, select and change, look. Pay attention to the um, data binding. We are uh, data binding uh, the, the we are we have the name that changes uh, both on the table and on the uh, header of the form. Uh, the change that we choose to uh, highlight the changes in green on the table, and when I save, the green disappear. I can also create another user. So uh, please note that uh, the ID is not assigned uh, now, but when I click save, it is assigned. Or in, in this case, this is just a mock, but we simulate the generation of an, an ID, like a sequence uh, in, in Oracle. And then uh, we can go to the vehicle and uh, create, uh, we can assign this vehicle, make a reservation. So let's make a reservation with this user. Okay. Look at the icon of the reservation state on the top right. Okay. The state changed in reserved. So I can save, okay. So this is one example. Let's close it and try the CDO one. Uh, so for the CDO, I need to uh, launch the CDO server. This is the CDO server started. So I can launch the application. This is the application started, so I can reopen the browser. Okay, uh, for those who knows um, uh, CDO, there you can uh, identify the typical uh, CDO ID. Um, then we again can uh, change something, save, go to the vehicle, make the reservation. Okay, save. Okay, same behavior. Okay, stop it. Now, let's see the MyBatis version. So the, the, the version that goes on the, the, the uses the DB, Oracle in this case. In this case I have a, 
um, that the Oracle database with some uh, data and uh, I launch me clean here I stop also the CEO server okay clear or clear okay my bot is go run as okay Let's start the application. Okay, this is the case of Oracle. Um, so, for example, let's see. Let, let's make a, a simple change as before. But now we have we are working with a DB. So I save, and then uh, you, you can check on the DB. The name has changed and get back to the vehicle. Let's make a reservation. Uh, in this case, make reservation. Okay. Reservation. Okay, save it. And if we go to the DB, we have now the reservation. Okay. So let's stop this and uh, switch to the desktop version with same sources okay so let's go here i switch to the running platform which is the desktop one apply let's wait for the building of the workspace okay so now uh when well when we when you you change the platform you have to do some hacking because we usually you don't have all the all the implementation in the same workspace so let me close this and reopen huh? let's wait it's so resolving Uh, let me do this. We are switching between target platform, which is al always a, a, a delicate. Oops. Let's try again. Close and reopen. Let's see mm, what's happening. Let's try again the switch uh, here. Yes, maybe this time. Usually you would have two different uh, workspace with the two target platform. Okay, now we are. Okay, now we are here in the RCP application. So let's go with the dummy application, with the dummy persistence. Now we have a desktop application running the same sources as before coming starting maybe <laughs> starting starting yes it's here and so let's let's uh, you can see that the behavior is exactly the same make a reservation okay save Okay, there are other two examples, but mm, well, the, the time is not, uh, we are running out of time. So, uh, let me switch 
at the presentation and uh, well remember thank you for your attention and remember to evaluate the session please so thank you.